Everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric, and we got a brand new and fun and exciting episode for you guys this Friday, because I ran a poll and asked what piece of retro gaming rare hardware that I feature on the channel in years past you wanted to see more of, and it was resounding FM Town's Marty answer. This is also going to be the longest episode in Video Game Esoteric history, so go ahead, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda or a beer, and strap in for some FM Town's fun, because this console is very weird, and it's very unassuming. But it's really just a PC in a console shell. Up front, you got a CD access light, a reset button, a power button, and an IC read button. We'll get to that more later. But the interesting thing is what's behind this open button right here. Because the FM Towns Marty has notoriously unreliable CD-ROM drives, and if you want to collect for it, it's going to prove to be very difficult. What I recommend is this. Not easy to find, but it's a Doc Brown optical disc emulator. If you want to get one, it's pretty much eBay at this point in time. The original maker doesn't make many, and it's very hard to order from him. But if you want to get in on the FM Towns Marty, a Doc Brown is basically an essential kit at this point in time. Because the games did come on CD, and one of the reasons I love collecting for the FM Towns and Marty are these gigantic cases. Splatterhouse here is one of my favorite games on the system, and the artwork of the West Mansion on the back, I just absolutely love that. I kind of want to hang it on my wall. And fun story, I accidentally bought this while inebriated on eBay. I had been looking at it and I thought it was a little too expensive, and then I had a couple too many drinks, and I went ahead and bought it. I don't regret it, but I did then. The funny thing about FM Towns games is that depending on what game you're opening, there's different things in the case. This is complete. This all that came in that big box back in the day was a jewel case. It is a massive case for not a lot of product. But if you take a look at the front, it's got awesome artwork, and on the back is even better. You get a little bit of flavor text in Japanese, and you get another look at the West Mansion there. But this is the best version of Splatterhouse ever to get ported, outside of obviously the arcade original. If you want to play the best port of Splatterhouse to a console, you have to play the FM Towns version. It's a little bit of a bummer depending on how expensive these games are. Some of the manuals just aren't that exciting. It's not a bad manual, and I appreciate it's not black and white. It's actually red and white, kind of looks like blood. But this is all you get for a Splatterhouse set. Not a cheap game. Would I recommend you buy it? That's up to you. Would I recommend you buy a Marty? That's also up to you. Honestly, it's probably not for everybody, but you guys wanted to see it again. So here we are talking about it again. But some games give you a lot. Something like Emerald Dragon here, an awesome role-playing game. Not only does it come in the same big box case as Splatterhouse does, it also has the same incredible style of artwork on the back. But when you open it up, there are so many more things in the case. You get an advertisement for other games from the developer, but behind that, one of my favorite things that I have in my town's collection is this gigantic overworld map. When you unfold that, it is in full color, and it's just a fun thing to look at. It feels like the era of big box PC gaming when you got so many things in the box. Manual, hit or miss on FM Towns, this one is in partial color. Some pages are color, some pages are black and white, and some games have full color manuals. There's so many different variant packages for the FM Towns and Marty. Some, like this game here, even came original with this little plastic slipcase for the jewel case. So if it's not there, I guess it's not complete, not that I really care. And you even get the extra mile artwork on the front and the back of the jewel case. Only thing that doesn't feel great about Emerald Dragon is the disc art, or a complete lack thereof. It's just not that exciting to look at compared to everything else that came in there. But you have to remember, the Towns and the Marty uses both boot discs for some games and save discs for pretty much every game. They are formatted differently than standard North American floppy disks. It's a Japanese system, so it's going to do things ever so slightly differently. And for a Marty, you either have to make sure that your floppy drive is working, I have since prepared mine, or you need a floppy emulator in there if you need a boot disk. If you just want to save the IC card slot at the bottom, we'll take an SRAM card and you can save there. You can even connect a keyboard to the Marty. You got your floppy drive, you got your IC card, and you got this massive power button that interestingly is on the side of the console. You don't see that very often whatsoever. But this just basically takes standard PCMCA style SRAM cards, or SRAM depending on how you want to pronounce it, and they're actually not that hard to find whatsoever, so you can totally get away with it if you so want to. Now around the back of the console is a little bit of a downer. S-Video is the best you can get, but there is a toggle switch between normal and soft picture modes. Don't know why you choose soft, but I guess you can. But you get your S-Video and you get your composite video. That's as good as the Marty will do. 
Now you will hear that some games on the FM Towns will not run on the Marty because the Marty doesn't have enough RAM. That's true, air quotes. But behind this flap right here that you have to break plastic tabs off of, there is a way to increase the RAM, but it's unicorn status rare, but technically you can do it. But a game like Turbo Outrun is another awesome game on the FM Towns Marty. And once we get through this hardware overview, I'm gonna give you a list and talk about the best games that I think you should play. But again, different type of case, but the same outstanding artwork. When we get to this one, it's a different sort of system as far as how they pack it. You get this almost Neo Geo soft case aesthetic to it, and you get this gray piece of foam covering everything up. But underneath that, you're gonna see that Turbo Outrun manual as well as the disc underneath. And in this instance, you're not gonna get a jewel case insert. You're just going to get back art, but at least the Turbo Outrun disc looks good. And that's just a blank insert right there that does absolutely nothing. I guess you could hide something behind it if you wanted to. I do appreciate that they put that awesome photo on the back. But unlike some of the other manuals we've been looking at, these releases have full color from start to finish. So it feels like almost a budget product and a premium product put together. The case is less nice than the big plastic hard shell cases, but you get full color art, but you lose that front jewel case insert. But collecting these is a ton of fun. It's that classic Japanese era of just amazing artwork, except for some reason Galaxy Force decided to have epic artwork on the front, and to be about as lazy as possible on the back. Three small screenshots and just a view of space. Don't know how that one made it past approval. You get a reg card. Someone said make a joke, should I mail it in? So I've made that joke, should I mail it in? No, I will not. But again, you're gonna get a full color manual. And this is what I love about Japanese PC games. It feels very similar to DOS gaming back in the 90s and even Windows 95 era, where you just got so much cool stuff in the box. But there are budget releases for the FM Towns as well. Something like Afterburner here just comes in a jewel case. There is no bigger case for it. You do get a nice manual, and interestingly behind the disc, I don't know if this is original or not, it came with my copy, you get this green foam protecting layer to make sure you don't scratch your CD-ROM drive. And even though this manual is a little bit worn down, I am definitely not the first owner, probably not even the second, you get a good look at the game, and you get a lot of fun artwork and color inside of it. It just feels, again, like a premium product that you really want to have on your shelf. And sometimes the big plastic cases are just missing with the game. Puli Rula and Raiden here just don't have them. Now, how do you control a Marty? Well, you have some options. This is the FM Towns Marty controller, and it's pretty decent. It's not a very big controller, though. My hands aren't huge, so they kind of fit. But if you're dealing with big uh, meat paws there, this is going to feel tiny in your hand. For me, it's a little bit small, but it is manageable. It does everything you need it to do. Now there's another control pad, and this is for the FM Towns computer, works on the Marty. If you see this thing, run away from it. That D-pad is epic hot dumpster fire garbage. I have never felt a worse D-pad in a controller in my life. So if you're Marty shipping with one of these, be prepared to buy a new controller because you do not want to use this thing. It sucks. But you'll see around the front, we have a microphone in jack as you can do some karaoke. You got a headphone jack with volume. And you have controller ports and you can also put a mouse you can do a mouse and keyboard on this and if you do have a marty with a cd-rom drive you can even load up discs my cd-rom drive does function at least the last time i tested it so if i wanted to spin up some original discs i 100 percent could do that something like pooly ruly here not an easy game to pronounce is amazing but we said we're going to talk about games so let's talk about the best fm towns games <laughs> You really can't talk about the FM Towns if you do not talk about Puli Rula. It is not easy to pronounce, and it is a very strange yet utterly charming beat em up game from Taito. This is a port of the RT original, and it's one of the best ports around, but it's also available on PlayStation 1 and Saturn. So if you want to play it, you definitely don't need to own an FM Towns. But if you want to buy an FM Towns or an FM Towns Marty, it is 100% a game you need to check out. It is the simplest beat-em-up. It's a two-button system, but what goes on in this game is just absolutely wacky, and it's one of those games you definitely have to play and experience yourself because it just gets weirder and weirder as time goes on. Every single stage makes things slightly different 
and slightly more unique. Here we're fighting these gigantic what look like onions with tentacles and every time you defeat an enemy an animal pops out and you can collect it four points. But this game has an absolutely spectacular soundtrack. It is hyper colorful and it is just weird. You think this is the weirdest part? The weirdest part's coming up and it's definitely something that always gets talked about in gaming when sort of strange things happen. But stage three that's only available in the Japanese version, if you play a North American arcade board, you will not see this level whatsoever, has these two gigantic female legs are sticking out of a wall and there's a door in the middle. Where do you think that goes? Well, it goes to the universe with a pink elephant coming out of it. If you've never played Puli Rula, definitely check it out. Now I know I said earlier that Super Street Fighter 2 wouldn't run on the Marty, but there is that RAM expansion and it has been proven to exist. For the longest time people thought it was just a rumor, but three or four have sold in intervening years. It's been too expensive for my blood, but if you're a modder out there that likes creating products for exotic hardware and filling a niche, if you could reverse engineer the RAM expansion for the Marty and sell it on the market, I think you would have a very, very big market for that. Actually, I just thought of somebody in my head who could probably make it and I'm going to suggest that project to them. But this will run on a Marty with that extra RAM, or it'll run on an FM Towns if you don't have it, and it's an excellent version of Street Fighter 2. Now I'm definitely more of a King of Fighters SNK fan than I am a Capcom fan, but I will say that Street Fighter 2 is still an excellent game, and outside of the controls being a little more difficult, because don't forget, we're lacking buttons here, it's an excellent port of an already amazing game, and one that you definitely should check out if you've got a Towns or a Marty with that rare RAM expansion, because honestly, just like the Sharp X68000, the Marty and the FM Towns are also a source for some really heavy hitting arcade ports and they were about as close to the arcade as you can get back when this was on the market because sure, something like this game has better ports on later hardware but when this was on store shelves, it was basically this, the X68000 or going to the arcades to get the real true as close to the arcade board experience as you could. Now of course Splatterhouse has to be shown because this is the game that's probably number one most synonymous with the FM Towns because for the longest time this was the best port of the game until they basically released the arcade ROM on you know virtual console services for different consoles like that. This is near to arcade perfect. It's not 100% arcade perfect, it's like 98%. But Splatterhouse is amazing, and if you compare this version to the PC Engine, it is night and day. And don't get me wrong, I own the PC Engine version, and it is an excellent game. But if you want to get as close to the arcade board as possible without dealing with emulation on MAME or buying a $2,000 minimum PCB, then Splatterhouse on the FM Towns has you covered. Because honestly, just knocking those dudes into the back wall and watching them splatter is one of the most fun times you can have in gaming. And just like the arcade board, you can cheese this first boss if you get into the right corner of the screen and kick. This is the only port that ever had this door explosion either. But the FM Towns Marty has awesome audio, so go ahead and listen for like 35 seconds and I will be right back. The Marty just has absolutely spectacular sound hardware on board because don't forget it really is just a computer in a case and Splatterhouse soundtrack there sounds exactly like it should. But the Marty and the FM Towns also have a ton of great Sega arcade ports and it's interesting because Sega had their own hardware on the market but there is Afterburner 1, 2, and 3 available and we're playing the original Afterburner because it's what's in my collection what I just showed you. But the sprite scaling on the Marty, it's a really good approximation of what the arcade board did. And when the sky changes color, this image just looks spectacular. This was one of the best ports of Afterburner around when it came out. And if you want to play Afterburner and you have a Marty or a Towns, it's an awesome game to play. And if you're thinking about buying an FM Towns computer or a Marty, it's definitely one of those games that you should check out. And if you want to start adding games to your collection, it is also one of the less expensive games for the Marty, but I should say right now, this isn't Neo Geo pricing territory, but Japanese computer stuff 
it is not cheap, especially for the games that you really want to have in your collection. We're talking top dollar on stuff like this. So it's nice that Afterburn is a quote unquote cheap game, even though in comparison to some other games you might not think it's cheap at all. And that's one thing you need to know about collecting for this and owning the hardware is that I got these a long time ago and they were cheaper, but if you want to start getting into it today, you have to bring your wallet, and you need to make sure that wallet is full because you're not getting any deals unless you start importing from Japan. Even there, it's kind of expensive. But speaking of Sega and speaking of sprite scaling, we have Turbo Outrun here as well. Now, a funny thing about the FM Towns Marty controller versus using a keyboard and mouse is some of these games technically work on the Marty, but you don't have enough keys to actually fully play them unless you have the keyboard hooked up as well. Something like Turbo Outrun here is going to work perfectly fine, but Chase HQ from Taito, you're not going to have a key to push the turbo button. And ignore me here, I was just missing some shifts there. It is a little bit hard to hit the shift button because it's mapped to the trigger. Kind of forgot about that. But again, it's another awesome arcade port from Sega on the FM Towns, and it is just a spectacular game as well. Obviously, if you want to play the full fat version, just download the arcade ROM, but if you're really into FM Towns and you're looking for some racing to do, you could do a lot worse than OutRun. And that's the thing about the Marty. A lot of these games can be played on other hardware, and maybe they can be played a little bit cheaper, or maybe it'll be a little bit better of an experience. And the FM Towns and Marty are definitely for the collectors or the Japanese PC enthusiasts, but if you think you want to get into it, and this game also is on the cheaper end of the spectrum, and it is a ton of fun. But I know we've talked a lot about Sega, let's get over to a different genre and a different company completely. Let's talk about Mad Stalker. This is an awesome side-scrolling beat-em-up mech game. It's one of my favorites on the FM Towns and FM Towns Marty. Technically, the Sharp X68000 has a little bit better graphics, but you're really not missing much on the Marty here. And I just love running around in a gigantic mech beating up these other mechs and kind of looks, looks like a rabbit robot right there with all these different people running around the ground screaming. It's a ton of fun, especially if you like beat-em-ups, and it's a relatively challenging game as well. You're not going to beat it in 20 minutes unless you learn about the whole thing. It's going to give you a lot of value for the money, and let me tell you, that money is not going to be cheap. This is one of the more expensive games on the towns, so it's definitely something you want to emulate first and check out. Now, if you guys are really interested, leave me a comment down below, and I will do an emulation guide video on how to get the FM Towns emulating because I always recommend emulate a game before you spend the money to add it to your collection. The FM Towns is no different. You do not want to spend $500 on a game you think you're going to like, only to have it imported from Japan and find out you really don't like it. But Mad Stalker, absolute blast, ton of fun, 10 out of 10, can't recommend it enough. But you would think this is the only mech 2D beat-em-up on the machine, and you would be wrong. Before we get to the gameplay, this has got to be the best intro to a game ever. Cat comes out with a zoom icon, and he gets hit by an elevator. That's just how the game starts, and that game is Genocide 2 or Genocide Squared. You even get what look like stop-motion animations of action figures fighting in the background. Japanese developers like to do things differently than US developers, and some of the games on the FM Towns and Marty are just unlike things you've ever seen before. But just like Mad Stalker, it's a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up hack-and-slash mech game. So you have your options of two different mech games on the FM Towns Marty. And honestly, yeah, options are always good. Same concept, but I love that the little guys on the ground aren't just running away from you. They're actually attacking you, and you can attack back. They will jump at you, they will pile onto your mech, and they will slow you down if you do not shake them off. It's a really fun sort of look, and I absolutely love it and can't get enough of it. It's just got some great graphics, some nice size sprites, and everything you would want out of a game. So again, if you're looking into collecting for this, Genocide 2, definitely a game that I would highly recommend you check out. You could do a lot worse. But like I said, down here, all you do is just come out of that barrel and start jumping at your mech. It is hilarious. But if you want to play something a little bit more lighter theme, then there's an excellent port of Bubble Bobble on the FM Towns as well. It has some of the best case art of any FM Towns game ever released in my opinion. 
But weirdly, it must be relatively rare, because if you want to get a copy of this game, you're getting close to $1,000 for it now. You could buy an arcade PCB for less than that, so would you really want to collect this on the FM Towns? My answer would probably be absolutely not. But if you have an FM Towns and FM Towns Marty, you can just decide to burn the game, or use an optical disc emulator and check it out, because if you've never somehow played Bubble Bobble before, it is one of my favorite arcade games of all time, and you definitely can't go wrong here. Obviously, there are sequels to this game, Bubble Symphony, as well as Bubble Memories, but this is where it all got its start, and there were so many different ports back in the day. This was huge on the NES, but you can play it on the FM Towns as well, and if you got a second controller, you can play in two-player mode, and that is definitely how you want to do it. Speaking of two-player games that I'm going to play as a one-player, Poyo Poyo is available on the FM Towns as well, and it is an absolutely spectacular version with awesome music and awesome art. And that's the thing, the FM Towns isn't just filled with one-player experiences, there's a lot of different games you can play with two players, so if you have two controllers and you have a friend over and you want to show them some exotic hardware, you could do a lot worse than the Towns or the Towns Marty. But again, if you've ever played Poyo Poyo before, you know exactly what's going on here. But this individual release has some absolutely awesome soundtrack music. It's one of my favorite tracks in the Poyo Poyo universe. So just like before, I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to listen to how it sounds. But yeah, if you've never played Poyo Poyo before, you got to do it. But here comes that soundtrack. Enjoy. Just an awesome soundtrack, but of course it wouldn't be a video if we didn't talk about shmups, some people's favorite genre and some people's least favorite. Every time I do a video on them, they don't do very well, but there's different types on the FM Town. Starting with Scavenger 4 here, it is a full motion video shmup where you have some sprites overlaid on top of the screen. Kind of feels like something that would be on the Sega CD, except it's on the FM Town's Marty. But it is a really good game with a lot of fun to be had. And that's the thing, because this was a PC, it definitely can mix multimedia elements like full motion video with sprites. Now I don't know if they're actually playing a full motion video or these are just rendered frames displaying. I'm not that familiar with this exact game. But this is a look that the FM Towns Marty could pull off because it was a 32-bit PC with a CD-ROM drive. This is not something you were getting on the Sega Genesis or the Super Nintendo, but it is something that you're getting on the FM Towns and FM Towns Marty. And it's a game that I'm assuming most people probably ever haven't played, and you definitely should check it out. I love this kind of canyon run here, kind of has some Star Wars vibes going on to it. It can be a little bit hard to aim at your enemies because obviously the screen space versus where your sprite is is a little bit jarring based upon it being an overlaid video. But it's a ton of fun and it is a good technical showcase for what the Marty could do with that CD-ROM drive because obviously something like Bubble Bobble, CD-ROM was the storage medium but it didn't take advantage of that whatsoever. A game like Scavenger 4 here is actually taking advantage of that 32-bit processing power as well as the CD-ROM drive on board to show you something different. But if you want to talk about sprite scaling and space shmups, well then Galaxy Force 2 has you covered. This game has hard sort of Night Striker vibes to it. I just absolutely love the game and all the sprites that are moving around on the screen are spectacular and you get this really good pseudo 3D effect that I will show you in a moment. But the soundtrack on this game is like jazz rock perfection, but I just love this vibe here. These sprites scaling towards you, you're playing in this pseudo 3D screen space. This is a spectacular game, and I think it's one of the games that best shows up what the hardware was actually capable of on FM Towns. But again, you gotta hear the soundtrack for this game. It's spectacular, so go ahead and enjoy it for like 45 seconds, and I'll come back and talk about a couple more, more traditional shmups. It's jazzy. Enjoy. Just sounds so good. Now, if you like your shmups more traditional and more tate or vertical, Tatsujin O has you covered. 
Now, fair warning, this game is brutally hard. It is incredibly hard, but this is the only home port of this game that ever existed. Obviously, the arcade version is ever so slightly better, but if you want a physical copy of Tatsujin O, also known as Truxton 2, the FM Towns and FM Towns Marty has you covered. But like a lot of the games on this list, if you want to actually own a copy, you better bring that checkbook because they are not giving them away. But it is an awesome shmup. It is super challenging. It's really fun to look at and it's got a great soundtrack. But this, to me, is as hard as most bullet hell shmups, except it's not a bullet hell shmup whatsoever. If you die in Tatsujino, you get sent back a long way and you lose all your power-ups and it becomes near impossible to progress in the game. And this is a cruel game, but when you play it and you learn it and you learn to enjoy it, you're going to love it. And it is another showcase of what the FM Towns Marty is capable of and it's also a showcase as to why this system is so great because in some instances it's the only place you're going to be able to play some of these games. And that's why if you're a hardcore collector, maybe picking up an FM Towns or an FM Towns Marty is for you. Now on the shmup side, but more isometric, we have a great port of viewpoint as well. This game always messes with my head. It takes me so long to get used to this isometric view. But when you get used to it, it's a fun breath of fresh air and definitely another good game to check out on the Marty. And that's what this list is all about. I'm not ranking these games. I'm just talking about sort of the primer to get into the library because there's a ton of games on the Marty. Now, obviously, if you don't speak Japanese, there's going to be a big language barrier. So I'm trying to show you guys games you can 100% play from start to finish without understanding any Japanese whatsoever. And that's why Viewpoint is on this list. It's definitely an interesting shmup, but it is very pretty on the Marty, and I absolutely love playing it here. It's just one of those games. People either seem to love it or hate it completely. Now, the next game on the list is always mentioned as being one of the FM Town's best games, and I think it's just all right. And I've absolutely no idea how you pronounce the title. It makes no sense. You can read it with me. Reaxber? Reaxenber? I do not know. It's from Data West. If you can pronounce it, leave me a comment down below. This is always mentioned as being a really good shmup, and I just think it is fine. It's certainly not the prettiest thing to look at. Kind of has like a 16-bit computer vibe to it. But again, it is an extremely challenging game. If you get hit, you're going to be pushed all the way back to the beginning, and you're going to lose absolutely every single one of your power-ups. In some instances, it's better just to reset the entire game and try again. But people that like horizontal shmups, people that like rare and exotic shmups, and people that like shmups that are going to give them one hell of a challenge should definitely check out however the hell you pronounce this game. Racks and backs and berry hole. That sounds as good as I can possibly come up with. But the next game on the list, if you play one deep cut and you try to machine translate it, I definitely recommend it because it's a weird and interesting game. And that game is going to be Ballad for Maria. It is a visual novel murder mystery. I've only probably played half an hour of it because it takes a long time to translate with a phone and try to understand what's going on. But the main reason I included this game is that on the FM Towns and FM Towns Marty, there's a whole host of genres of games you probably have never heard of whatsoever. Fair warning though, this game is fine, but some of the other visual novels on the Towns and Marty may have subject matter that you might not want to have on your shelf. I know there's definitely some games I'm not interested in owning whatsoever, but Maria here lost her hands and it is our job to figure out who did it and why it happened. I just love the intro, the soundtrack's great, and I like talking about weird genres. But there you go, there is a 30 minute video on the FM Towns Marty. You guys voted for this. I talked about bringing one piece of rare and exotic hardware I talked about a long time ago back to the channel because it's been almost four years since I talked about the FM Towns Marty. Should you buy one? That's the big elephant in the room. If you own a lot of consoles and you want to add one more to your collection, then hey, why not? It's your money. You can probably think of dumber ways to spend it. If you're not a huge console collector but you want to check the games out, I can't recommend emulation enough. There is a Mr. FPGA core in the works for the Marty as well, so hopefully we'll be playing this on FPGA at some point in time. But the Marty is a really fun piece of hardware that is not for everyone. But if you're into it, if you like Japanese PC games, if you like great ports of arcade games, and you have more money than common sense, then the FM Towns Marty may be for you as well. Sure that, thanks so much for watching guys. Long as a video ever. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.